Hi all, Stephen Gallagher here, City of Dublin ETV, Daddy, Daddy, coordinator, my Daddy, assistant here beside me. Daddy. Looking forward to the Fed Fest 21, while a lineup, definitely something for everybody, and really hope you can all join us. Hi, I'm John Herfton, I'm the Technology Enhanced Learning Coordinator for Tipperary E2B. Um, I'm from the originally, I'm qualified technical, I'm a second level teacher, and I'm looking forward to Katie Novak's session. Hi, my name is Tracy Anderson. I'm the Professional Development and Technology Enhanced Learning Coordinator for Longford and Westmead Education and Training Board. I myself am a FET educator for over 20 years at this stage. I'm looking forward to the opportunities um, that FET Fest gives us in terms of collaboration and best practice amongst FET. Enjoy. Join you today from a, a pretty damp and dreary Athen Rye, County Galway. I hope you can get a snapshot of St John's Castle there in the background. Um, to introduce myself, my name is Olive. I'm PD coordinator for Galway Roscommon Education and Training Board. Hi, my name is Siobhan McCara and I'm the TAL Officer in Cabin Monaghan Education and Training Board. What a fantastic event KWTV and the other collaborating ETBs have put on for us this week. So many great sessions that it's so hard to pick a favourite, so I'm not going to do that. Best wishes to all the contributors and thanks a million to the organising committee for putting on such a fantastic event. Hello, my name is Claire O'Boyle. I'm the Technology Enhanced Learning Officer at Lies and Means ETB. I'm currently an RD. What I love about this is that it's a collaboration of people from all over the country. It feels like a real FET community. I'm hoping to learn some new tips and tricks for making life easier for, for teachers and for making our classes better for us and for our learners. Hello, my name is Brendan Ryan. I'm learning technologist with Limerick and Clare ETB and you're joining me on a typical summer's day in County Limerick. I'm really looking forward to FET Fest. Over the coming week, we'll have the opportunity to see best practice around the country in further education and training. I'm particularly looking forward to Tell Tuesday when I get to see all the best practice from my colleagues around the country and to share some of our practices from Limerick and Clare. Hello, my name is Sinead Byrne. I'm the Professional Learning and Development and Communications Officer with Loud Mead ETB. I'm here in Carlingford County Loud. What I'm really looking forward to in Fifth Fest is hearing the inspirational stories from leaders in FET and from colleagues around the country. Hi, Tara Robinson here. I'm the Professional Development Coordinator in the Limerick and Clare ETB. Uh, really excited about Fifth Fest and in particular I'm looking forward to hearing uh, the contributions from all of the different ETBs. Hi everyone, Michael Donoghue, Professional Learning and Development Coordinator, Cap Monaghan ETB. We are coming to you from the beautiful Latin Lane Mountain in Kingscroft County Cab. Really looking forward to the upcoming Fed Fest event. But this is a really exciting and welcome initiative to showcase the best of what's happening in Fed right across our 16 ETBs. So really looking forward to attending and engaging across the Hey, Carrie here, PD coordinator for CDETB, and what I am looking forward to most about FET Fest is having an opportunity to see and to share loads of different experiences from across all of our further ed teachers and across all of the ETBs, as well as having international and well-renowned speakers there to collaborate with.
Good morning, FetFest. Are you ready for FetFest Live? So we have 21 live events and more than 30 presentations from ETBs throughout Ireland. We have a social and networking space in Kumo space coming up from 11 until 12 every day this week, Monday to Friday. So I'm Ashley and I am the Professional Development and Research Projects Coordinator in Kildare and Wicklow ETB. It is an honour to bring you our Festival of Learning and Development for Educators and Leaders in FET. On behalf of my PD and TEL um, coordinators nationally, we have the absolute pleasure and privilege of working alongside and learning from our educators who together with learners make the magic happen both inside and outside of the classroom every day. This past year has brought us many challenges, frustrations and at times isolation. As FED educators and leaders of learning, the pandemic has also given us a gift, an opportunity to build stronger relationships and to learn together. We want to celebrate you, your dedication, your innovation, your creativity, your relentless hard work and commitment to respond, learn and develop, to maintain our FET provision and support all learners. On behalf of each one of those learners, thank you. From my PD and TEL colleagues to the FET educators of Ireland, we want you to know that FET Fest is a celebration of you. It is a festival of learning, of sharing, of socialising and of networking. We've tried to have something for everyone. So use this week in whatever way suits you best. As the African proverb goes, it takes a village. FETFest is the product of 16 villages coming together and the potential that we have when we join as a community of educators and leaders working and learning together to provide best in class education and training opportunities for all. We are delighted to welcome Minister for Higher and Further Education, Research, Science and Innovation, Simon Harris, to join us this morning to open FETFest, together with Chief Executive Officer of Solis, Andrew Brownlee. Firstly, I would like to introduce our Chief Executive of Kildare and Wicklow ETB, Dr Deirdre Keyes, to speak. Many thanks, Ashley, and uh, I just want to say it's a, it's a real privilege for me here this morning as Chief Executive of Kildare and Wicklow Education and Training Board uh, to be present uh, and also to be part of the opening ceremony of this fantastic conference. I want to pay particular tribute to all of the professional development teams and TEL teams across the country, uh, many of whom we met on the lovely tour de force and I must say I really enjoyed uh, some of those visuals early on and also to the organising committee to you Ashley, Ashley Stevens, Carrie Archer from the City of Dublin VEC and Wendy O'Sullivan uh, who have put this fantastic and rich programme together. Uh, I'd also acknowledge the hard work and uh, vision of my own further education and training director and to all the further education and training directors across the country uh, who are joining us here this morning. So just to say a big thank you uh, for this fantastic event, which we are all really looking forward to. I think it's important as well that we're taking the time out to acknowledge the professionals in the sector. I have been involved in the what was the VEC sector uh, for a very, very long time and to see how it has changed, how it has adapted, how it has innovative, innovated, how it has delivered over the past number of decades um, is is really a tribute to and can be attributed to uh, you, the professionals working in the sector. And I think this week we're sending out a very clear message uh, that we as a sector can deliver. What is at the heart of all of this is our ambition to have a world class further education and training sector. Um, and that is part of building Ireland's future and it couldn't be more important than right now. In Kildare and Wicklow Education Training Board, excellence in teaching and learning is a cornerstone of our own uh, statement of strategy, but it is the transforming learning that is the cornerstone of the national FET strategy. What we teach, how we teach it and what are those outcomes and that we are delivering better outcomes for our learners, for society and, and for the economy. 
it is fantastic to have our own minister here who's a resident uh, in Wicklow, uh, Simon, Minister for Further and Higher Education. Uh, we're delighted to have you and we welcome your commitment, not just to this ETB, but to the whole sector. Uh, it's really important that you are here this morning, uh, both to acknowledge and I suppose pay tribute to the importance of the sector and the professionals within it, but also we're very interested to hear uh, what you have to say to us this morning. So too are we delighted to have the Chief Executive, Andrew. It's very important that you're here as well this morning because in terms of moving this whole agenda forward, key to all of that will be investment in infrastructure, investment in research and investment in people. And we know how committed you both are to that agenda. So thank you very much uh, for being here this morning. And I would also like to acknowledge and pay tribute to your vision and your commitment to that transforming a learning agenda uh, to date. So as I said, we are here uh, sending out a strong message uh, that we as a sector are ready, are ready to work with you. Um, I have looked in detail at the agenda and I look forward to attending many of the wonderful events uh, we have looking, we have shown uh, through that rich agenda that learning is about many things. It is about well-being, it's about enhanced digital skills, it is about empowering people, it's about literacy, it's about numeracy, it's about language, uh, it's about many, many things, it's about progression and it's about building people's capacity to contribute uh, in the best way possible uh, to society. So, Ashley, before we hand over to the Minister, I'm going to ask my Director of Further Education and Training, Ken, just to step in for a few minutes uh, to say a few words, but just to say to everybody, enjoy the event. We would love to be hosting you in the sunny uh, Wicklow, uh, Kildare area, uh, but, but this is a, a very good uh, substitute for that because we certainly uh, can feel the, the very, very positive vibe coming from all of you this morning. And I really do hope that you enjoy and settle in and that we'll see more of you later on in the week. Thank you. Thanks, Deirdre. Thanks, Deirdre. I appreciate the opportunity just to, to say thank you on behalf of the E2B team to everybody that's come here and to the work that all of our colleagues and the different E2Bs have, have done. I guess um, FET Fest had its origins last year uh, when we were in, in lockdown and we were looking at the challenges very much of, of how we move to an, in, an online environment and, and what that means for teaching and learning. But I think even long before that, uh, our colleagues were thinking about technology and how it sits with learning practice. And always we kind of focused on technology and, and what that meant. But our conversations even before that were more about teaching and learning and how technology can, in, you know, enhance that and, and be part of it, but operate in the surface, uh, below the surface, sorry, where you don't notice as much. And I think uh, the, the work that uh, Wendy and Carrie and Ashley and the other PD coordinators have done this week will really showcase that. So we're forced into this technology um, situation or answer to, to a problem that we have, but the technology is very much going to facilitate the things. So, you know, this isn't a conference about technology, it's about learning and education, and it's about well-being and motivation and, you know, transformation and the future. So, you know, it's not a focus on technology, which I think is a really good place to, to be thinking and a good place to go. So I really wish you all the best this week and I hope you enjoy the conference and the loads of different talks that we have. And uh, thank you again from the team here in KWETB uh, to everybody that's worked hard on this programme and everybody that's gone to attend it and make it very valuable with their contributions. So I'm going to hand you back now to Ashley to introduce the, the Minister. Thank you, Ken, and thank you, Deirdre. So we are absolutely delighted to welcome Minister for Higher and Further Education, Research, Science and Innovation. Simon Harris, over to you. 
thank thank you so much uh, thank you so much Ashley and thank you everybody for being here being here today um I really want to I really want to just begin by congratulating you on putting together this uh, wonderful fed fest uh, experience uh, organizing any sort of conference or gathering or professional development is is really difficult to do it online is even more challenging but to do it online with such uh, with such a plum uh, deserves huge congratulations the program that you've put together the range of speakers uh, that you've organized uh, the diversity of the different events even reading through uh, the digital platforms you're allowing people to walk over virtually and participate in different conversations i can see a huge amount of work has gone into pulling all of this together and i just really want to congratulate you ashley and carrie and wendy and all your colleagues for the massive amount of work and i can only imagine how uh, how this event will become even a great social gathering hopefully um in future years where we all, all are allowed to meet uh, in person again i very much look forward to that so i wanted to, to begin by that secondly i really wanted to be here today to say a, a genuine and heartfelt thank you to everybody working in the further education and training space i want to thank you for the incredible contribution you have made throughout the covid 19 pandemic i want to thank you for the flexibility the responsiveness, the resilience, uh, the can-do attitude that you've shown, and not and not just one that I've heard about, one that I have seen. And um, while I haven't been able to get out and about yet and visit every part of our further education and training sector, I've met many, many of you right across the country uh, looking down Zoom cameras, and I look forward to seeing you in person soon. But what I have seen, no matter where I visited, what town, what village, what service, I have seen passionate, committed, dedicated professionals always putting the needs of the learner first. I've never heard people grumble. Uh, the only grumble people ever have is give us more investment, and that's a good grumble to have. But I have seen the most passionate people, uh, and I'm really, really proud of the work uh, that you're doing. And I genuinely wanted to be here today on my own behalf and on behalf of my department and all of our agencies to say a huge thank you to every single person who has worked and gone above and beyond. And I suppose we're, we're here at a time of great hope because while the last, it's longer than a year now, but the last 15 months or so have been horrifically difficult for people, I think it is fair to say that there is there is a bit of hope in the air. Uh, the vaccine program is beginning to do its job. The country is beginning to reopen. The sun even came out over the weekend. And I think we can look forward with a degree of confidence uh, to an even better year for further and higher education uh, in the new, in the new, at the start of the new academic year. And I'm working really hard with your representative bodies, with union reps, with student reps, with management reps to publish a plan next month in June, in the next two or three weeks, that will show how we're going to increase on-site attendance again. Because whilst you have all done an incredible job, I'm conscious that education is not transactional. It's not just about looking down a Zoom camera. It's about the whole development of an individual. Uh, and we obviously often can do that in a better way when we come together in person. So really looking forward to being able to bring good news on that front, thanks to the incredible work that we've been doing uh, with you and your colleagues over the last number of weeks. When I was appointed to this role, uh, the first ever department dedicated to third level education for for about 24 hours, it was the Department of Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science. Uh, and on my first day in the job, we, we changed the title um, to put further and higher education in the title. And that wasn't done by accident. It was done as a signal of intent to send a very, very strong message to those of you working in the sector uh, and to our citizens thinking of accessing third level education and to the parents of young people thinking of accessing third level education, that we want further education and training to have a parity of esteem when it comes to the third level sector. It can't be the poor relation or the second choice. It has to be there at the same level as the higher education system. And I'm proud that we made that decision because I have absolutely no doubt that further education and training can be transformational and is transformational in the lives of so many people right across our country. Whether they're school leavers now preparing to transition from secondary school onto the next stage of their life, or whether they're career changers, whether they're people who thought that they had a secure job and then sadly the, glo the global pandemic came and everything that we thought was so certain became so uncertain and now we're looking to upskill and reskill again. So this is the opportunity for further and higher education to get a focus and attention, a policy direction and a level of investment that it hasn't seen in the decades gone past. And looking at how incredibly well you're already doing without that level of uh, political and civil service support, I can only think of what we can do together uh, with great confidence over the next number of years. Just wanted to give you a couple of reflections on where I think we're going to be going uh, together over the coming months and years. Firstly, there's no doubt digital transformation is here. 
um, it was already happening before the COVID pandemic and the COVID pandemic accelerated it. I've seen some really incredible examples of you and your colleagues embracing digital technology to keep the show on the road throughout the COVID pandemic. You've had to do it in an emergency way, in a way that you know needs to be made more sustainable, needs to be organised, needs to be invested in. But there's absolutely no doubt that the use of technology will enable us to bring education to more people. I met a group of, of learners in Longford Women's Link. Learners who aren't in a position to pack the bags and head off to college, they have other commitments. But thanks to digital technology, we've brought education to them in the most rural part of County Longford. And now they're tuned, they're now linked in with our third level education system. So when we all talk about going back to normal, if back to normal is going back to all the things that we've all missed doing, like seeing our friends, having holidays, normal, a degree of normality coming back, we're all looking forward to that. But from a public policy point of view, we can't go back to normal. What we need to do is we need to actually look at what has worked well during COVID. What have we learned during COVID that we'd like to keep? And what have we seen during COVID that we'd never like to see again? Uh, and I'm really looking forward to having that conversation with you and your representatives about how do we support some of the good things that you've seen that you'd now like to embed in terms of the transformation agenda going forward. Second issue I, I think we need to have a huge focus on, and, and I'm delighted that Deirdre highlighted it, is the issue of adult literacy, numeracy and digital skills. We live in a country that we like to boast that we have a very well educated people and that's true. We've seen such a huge increase in third level participation over the last number of years. But we also live in a country where one in six adults struggle to read. Uh, we live in a country where about one quarter of us would struggle to understand our electricity bill from a numbers point of view. And we live in a country where almost one in two of us lack basic digital skills. If we're, if we're going to turn rhetoric into action, and if we're going to make sure that we do build back better and that there is a new normal and that we leave nobody behind, we've got to really get so serious about this. We've got to apply a level of focus, a level of investment and a level of policy direction to adult literacy, numeracy and digital skills that we've never done before. So we've been working really, really hard with stakeholders, including yourselves, and led by Sullis. Uh, and this coming month in June, we will publish our new 10 year plan for adult literacy, numeracy and digital skills. And I'm absolutely determined uh, that we break down the stigma, the embarrassment and uh, that sometimes people can feel because that shame is not on them, it's on us. And um, it's the fact that they've been left behind um, by our society due, due, due to no fault of their own. And I'm determined that we work together to rectify that. And I've had the honour of meeting many of your adult literacy tutors uh, over the last while and I know how passionate you are about that. The third area is about lifelong learning and how do we embed lifelong learning? We do live in a country where culturally still most of us see education as something we do at a certain age in our life. So we go to school till we're 18, then we come out of school, we maybe access college for three or four years, then we go off into the workforce and job done. You all know as professionals, that's not the way education is going to be into the future. No matter how well qualified or how well skilled you are, the pace of change, whether it's climate or digitalization, is now so fast. People are always going to need to be able to dip in and out of education at a whole variety of ages. So how do we make sure we have a further education and training system that is as flexible and agile and responsive as it can be to those needs? And tomorrow we'll publish our new national recovery plan. And I'm really pleased to say there will be a very, very significant investment to make sure that through our further education and training sector, we can provide the upskilling needs and the training needs for so many people who are going to need the jobs of the future, but also the new skills maybe to even stay in their current job as well. And a couple of other just quick areas I wanted to highlight. I'm determined that we reform the CAO process. We cannot say that we want parity between further and higher education and only show the 17 year old when they sit down with their mom or their dad or their guidance counselor the options of going to university. We have to show them all of the further education options. We have to show them the apprenticeship options as well. And starting next year, I want to create a new CAO form, a single portal that shows a young person all of their options, not just a narrow range of options. We've developed an elitist kind of snobby attitude to third level education in this country that we need to break down. Further education should not be the fallback position for people. For some people, it can be the first choice. Uh, I met a I met a student in, in, in Carlo College recently, got his, got his points, got into university, like so many people, didn't like the degree, dropped out of the degree, went back to further education and has now done his pre-law, uh, his pre-law year in Carlo. 
he's got accepted into Maynooth to do his law degree. Statistically, Jack is far more likely to complete the law degree than the student who turns up in university on the first day. So we need to create an integrated third level system that shows a young person and a not so young person all of their options and not just a narrow range of options. And you're going to be hearing a lot from, from me about this in the coming months, because if I achieve nothing else, in my time in this ministry, I want to create an integrated third level system where people can move freely and easily between further education and higher education and where people can see their full range of options. Because I genuinely believe the work that you do is transformational and there isn't a right way of learning or a wrong way of learning. There are just different ways of learning and different pathways and we have to provide as many as possible. And the last thing I just want to reflect on this morning, um, and some of you won't be surprised to hear me to hear me single this this, sec this part of our sector out for praise uh, because I I've really become very fond of it over the last uh, year as I've gotten to know it. I really, really want to just highlight the incredible work being done by YouthReach uh, right across our country. I am honoured to have met so many learners and teachers in YouthReach uh, over the last period of time right across the country. And I tell you, it must be a very difficult job, but it must be such a rewarding job to see young people who have left our schools deflated, lacking in trust, worried, stressed and anxious. And to see how youth reach teachers have managed to build those people back up, have managed to build a relationship and a trust with them uh, that has transformed their lives. So I'm determined that youth reach comes out of the shadows and uh, that we really highlight the incredible work that it does, that school doesn't work for everybody. And where it doesn't work, we have to be able to provide an alternative way for a young person to get access to education. So I just particularly wanted to thank all of our youth reach teachers and tutors for the incredible work that they've done. So in, in closing, I am delighted to see you all taking the time, the much needed and valuable time to come together, to share ideas, to brainstorm, to network, to socialise, to learn. Uh, I think it's such an important part uh, of valuing each of you as a professional and making sure we continue to support your development. I'm looking forward already to FETFest next year uh, when we can do this in person. And I'm looking forward to being able to leave the Zoom camera behind in the coming uh, weeks and months and travel around our country and visit so many of your services and thank you in person. But I do want you to know uh, from the bottom of my heart that I am very, very clear that in every city, every town and every village in Ireland, the work that you're doing is transformational. It is life changing and it is vital to the economic and social cohesion of our future. So thank you so much. And I really hope you enjoy the next few days. Gurmina Malgov. Thank you so much, Minister Hans, and for setting us up absolutely perfectly for Motiva Motivation Monday um, as part of our FET Fest. So it gives me great pleasure um, to call on our music um, generation educator to bring us live with Andrew Brownlee for FET Fest. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Let me introduce our next guest speaker. Five, four, three, two, one. Such a cool dude, we gave him a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. He's the next star star living in Dublin. Five, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, our main man from Sullis. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> sorry, thanks very much, um, Ashley. And uh, sorry, I didn't catch um, the singer's name there. Do you know? Do you know Ashley? It's Rama Block. Rama Block. Thank, thanks so much for that. That was threatened um, based on on a, a Twitter exchange we we had um, in the last couple of weeks in the in the build up of. Uh, build up to this when when they uh, they announced me with a countdown and it sprung childhood memories into my mind of the five four three two one biscuit so um people people of our generation will, will hopefully uh, remember that theme tune uh, theme tune there so um so how do, how do i uh, how do i actually get myself together to follow that um i suppose just to say um thanks so much for for inviting me to to such um an exciting event um it's an absolute privilege to to, to be here um, and um, you know just to see so many speakers 
um, have so much um, kind of interest and stuff to say over the the course of the week. But um, I think the real value, and, and you know, you're kind of almost seeing it already today, is you know all of the practitioners across FET coming together, you know, reflecting on on what they're they're hearing from those those incredible speakers, you know, sharing ideas, um, sharing the, their plans. Um, and, you know, that's that's incredibly powerful. And even though Kildare Wicklow ETB are kind of sponsoring this and, and, and coordinating this is very much across ETB effort and it's very much across further education and training effort. And that's incredibly powerful and it's incredibly difficult to do. Um, and I, I'm blown away by the what you put together this week um, and, and what you've got planned and the potential it actually gives us to go and do all of those things that the minister just referenced, because if we have, uh, we if we have you behind you, if we have all of the practitioners and all of the people across FET coming forward with creative creativity, innovation, passion, and commitment, then we really can achieve anything. I believe. Um, as I said, I, I love the idea and, and the concept of FET Fest. Um, even though if you Google it, you may get a few alternative suggestions for um, for what it, what it might mean. So don't do that. Um, but everyone from every corner of further education coming together, every ETB involved, um, it really is great to see. And, and hopefully it's, um, well, it's not the start, but it's a continuation of building a community which can develop a common view of what FET means, of what it can achieve, and how we can do, do that together. And, and, and that's really, really important. Um, a few years ago, um, when I first moved into Solace, there were quite a lot of people actually that, that said that you, you can't actually define FET or further education and training as a single thing or a single offer. You know, it's just much too disparate. You know, it's too many programmes, too many different uh, things. And, and, you know, a few people were saying at the time, well, you know, FET's actually defined by, by what it's not. Really what it is, is it's what's left once you take higher ed and once you take schools out of, out of, out of the equation, you know, it, it just kind of serves, you know, too many different types of, of, of people, you know, to, to actually, you know, mean anything as a, as a kind of single concept or, or a single idea. But I think to me, I very quickly realised, and I think the minister's realising it too in the, in, in the year that he's been on the job, is that that's exactly what makes FET so specific and so unique. Um, it's the fact that we're there in every single community, that our doors are open no matter you know who you are or, or what your formal level of education is. And we can actually offer you a pathway to take you as far as you want to go. So now that's what's special about FET, and that's why we do have something very distinct to offer. Um, and one thing that I've realised over the, the last few years is it's, you know, it's core strength of FET are, are you guys, the, the practitioners, the, the teachers, the tutors, the instructors, the experts, the resource work, workers. And that also gives us something unique, I think, because every single one of you has the skills to support very different types of learners with very different support needs. You know, you understand the needs of people with disabilities, of people struggling with their mental health, or people from a disadvantaged background, and you find a way to keep the learner flowing, learning flowing, and to keep the learner supported. So I know that we don't have the dedicated kind of access officers or the dedicated kind of funding streams of support that you might see in higher education, you know, the hardship funds, you know, and all of those types of, of ideas, you know, and even the kind of technical professional expertise that, that they might need to, that they might enjoy. And we do need to do something about that. We need to look at a, a much more consistent um, approach to, to, to learner support across FET. But what we do have is we have incredible people for whom giving support it's just part of your job every single day, you know, and the learner and the student is always at the heart of everything you do. And, and that's incredibly powerful and it's something that we shouldn't um, overlook. Um, I think nowhere is that more apparent in the way that you all and the way that further education and training responded to the COVID pandemic. I mean, if you think back to last March, you know, the education system closed down virtually overnight. And you know, that is probably more severe re repercussions for FET for all of us than it would do for the schools or, or perhaps higher education. Because as we know, a lot of our learning is practical and technical in nature. 
work-based learning is, is, is a big, big part of, of a lot of it. But, you know, perhaps most importantly, a lot of our learners can be quite vulnerable. They need support. They just aren't suited to kind of wholly online learning. So it was a massive challenge. But I do just want to take the, the opportunity today to say a massive thanks to all of you because the way that you were able to kind of keep learning flowing, you know, move classes instantly online, you know, maintaining contact with learners, picking up the phone to them, they weren't comfortable with the, the online platform, issuing physical learner packs just to keep people engaged and keep the learning flowing, arranging alternative assessments because we couldn't have exams out anymore. I mean, one of the major feats of the last year, I, I think, is, is the way that we've been able to get apprenticeship online for the first time and actually find a way to deliver kind of theory components in an online way and focus on the, the on-site for the, the real practical. And that's allowing us to, to start addressing that waiting list that, that has bought, brought up. The way that you keep learners supported, you know, continue access to the guidance services, you know, um, facilitate access to the devices and the technology that they need to engage in, in online learning. Um, and also, you know, the, the new courses that we actually saw kind of spring up within a few weeks of the, the pandemic, you know, the fact that there were online courses being made available by ETBs on, on infection control to staff up the enormous kind of healthcare effort that, that was, was required. And um, there was another one I saw on remote working and remote leadership, you know, recognising that these were going to be the critical kind of skills needs of the future. And, you know, it just kind of is, a, is an example of the incredible creativity and, and the incredible innovation which is out there. And I know behind the scenes, and you guys will know all this and an awful lot of you guys all know this, that the work that went into upskilling over that period, over a very short period of time, so that you as the, as the, the, the teachers, the instructors, uh, the tutors understood the technology, understood how to make the best use of it, um, was an incredible undertaking as well. And just thanks so much for your commitment to doing that. And I think we've also seen, you know, overnight it was kind of that emergency approach, you know, stick it on Zoom, stick it on Teams, just try and run your class in the, the way that you did anyway, as best you can. But we've really seen the approach evolve over the last year and, and you know, use all the technology, use all the innovation that is available to it to, to make it a more kind of uh, seamless and, 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 you know, engaging product for, for all of our, our learners. So that has been incredible to see as well. You know, in the 15 months, we've obviously had to ramp up and ramp down again, you know, under very strict guidelines. But really what was amazing for me and what came through all of that is that the learner and the student always came first for you, um, for the staff, for the unions representing you. You know, and I think that's important to acknowledge here, is here today when we have so many staff together. Um, we had a very collaborative approach to engaging with staff and their representatives during the, the pandemic. And I have to say, and this isn't a lie, or this isn't trying to plumos you guys or, or plumos the unions, often the loudest voices that saying we need to find a way to get back on site were the teachers, the instructors, the, the practitioners. You know, that was your core aim. The learners can't be supported adequately through purely online. So let's try and find a way to get them back in a safe and safe socially distanced way. And I really do want to say thanks for that. And thanks for your incredible dedication and commitment to kind of keeping the show on the road. I mean, we obviously have a big challenge now um, around our learners. I think if you saw the QQI certification levels last year, they were down 50% in the first six months of the year. We do our own analysis through PLSS, obviously, as a, you know, across FET, and we were finding that the most marginalised target groups were particular participation was declining by anything up to kind of twenty percent um, over that period. And actually, you will have seen um, a publication from our Skills and Labour Market Research uh, Unit launched last week, which actually showed that levels of lifelong learning, of adult learning, declined 20% year on year from 2019 to 2020, despite all of our best efforts. So it has to be a major focus as we move forward um, into this year, but it also needs to be a much, um, a much more critical focus across all of us as we look to the future. The future needs a society, the future needs of the world of work, because, you know, I think as the Minister suggested, 
the days of one block of education when you're 17 years old, they're gone now. We need a, a flexible, fluid system where you can dip into FET, dip out, of it, dip out of it, dip into HE, you know, throughout your lifetime, throughout your career, and find some way of being recognised um, and tracked and, and, and uh, tracking that. So re-engaging those learners, that's going to be the first kind of critical priority. And you're all going to be needed to, to really drive that in some way. And so we really need to know all the ideas, and the resources that you need to effectively do that so that, that, that solace and so that the department and so that the government can support it. As the Minister said, we also have a critical role in terms of, of leading the recovery to help those that lost their jobs as a result of COVID get back into sustainable work. And that's going to need more flexible cross programme um, responses. It's probably going to need to pr need, mean prioritising some people over others. And, you know, we need your help, we need your commitment, and um, we need your expertise to help us to be able to do that. So that's the short term priorities. Um, and there's clearly an awful lot of work ahead of us um, where we're going to rely on your, your flexibility and your, your innovation, your commitment to get things done. But I think it's really important that we don't lose our focus on the long term and the exciting strategy that's set out for us all. In, in, in transforming learning. It's based on, on the, the idea that we need to simplify pathways, that we need to provide easier access for learners, that we need to a much more consistent, as I mentioned, and quality learner experience across all of further education and training, no matter where you present, whether it's a youth reach centre, a training centre, an FE college, um, we need to make sure, an adult education centre, we need to make sure that you have access to a consistent learner level of support that will meet your needs regardless of where you respond. And a more powerful identity, a FET college of the future, which will serve as a beacon of learning in individual communities and really drive a much more integrated appro approach across further education and training. So we have that exciting strategy. There's three core pillars out there. First of all, it's about building skills. You know, making sure that we, you know, we don't talk about SST and PLC, you know, and traineeships and evening training, you know, all of these and acronyms, all of these terms and labels that don't mean a thing if you're a learner just wanting to develop your skills and get into work or, or develop yourself as a person. So we need to look at a kind of new proposition which simplifies that kind of complex programme structure. We obviously need to make sure that we upskill the workforce and we give them that access to kind of fluid, kind of lifelong learning um, and upskilling opportunities. And um, we need to deliver on apprenticeship. There's some real exciting reforms in store um, around the, the apprenticeship system. And we need to look at the way that ETBs can actually play a stronger role in driving that system, overseeing that system, quality assuring that system, making sure that the curricula reflect the skills of tomorrow. And then we have that 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 um, imperative to make sure that we meet the critical skills needs of the economy and that we support that recovery over the next few years. Um, the minister has often talked about how what the, what those kind of economic development skills development priorities are really really important, but they're also equally balanced with a focus on social cohesion, and that's very much reflected in the FET strategy as well, where one of our three core pillars is around inclusion and you know that's around embedding inclusive practice across all of our provision and um, it's about making sure that we prioritize the key target cohorts the most marginalized groups that need the greatest level of support and be prepared to be flexible and develop specific specific initiatives to respond to those needs as i mentioned it's about a consistent system of learner support that means we're not the poor relation in that tertiary education system and fundamentally, and, and this is a short term, it's about putting in place a real long term sustainable approach to make a difference to our unmet literacy needs across our communities and across our societies. And an emerging challenge there um, in terms of digital inclusion, because I think, as we all know, if you don't have at least some level of digital skills, you're pretty much not going to be able to do any job in five or 10 years. I mean, that really is. The way that it's going. So it's really important we, we start to sort that, that problem out now. And the final pillar of the, the strategy, and it's kind of what brings it all together, 
is around pathways. So making sure we have better pathways from school to further education and training. That's the CAO idea the minister talked about, but it's also about trying to make vocational options available as part of transition year and potentially senior cycle as well. It's about pathways within FIT, so you don't come in and do a programme and then, you know, stop. Um, that, that there's actually a real pathway made available to you from the day that you arrive in the FET um, centre, um, college or, or facility. It's about making sure that those pathways from FET to HE are, are much more consistent, much more understood and much more, um, I suppose, kind of um, recognised by everyone as a real valid route and, and for a lot of people, a better route that will actually prepare you more effectively for higher education. And the great thing is we have evidence for that as well. And finally, it's around, you know, lifelong learning pathways as well, trying to create a system where we can offer that bite sized modularized learning at different points of careers and lives and allow people to build up their, their skills in that way. I actually think FET has an incredible advantage in that regard over higher education, because to be honest, it's what we've been doing for years, you know, delivering shorter courses, adapting our provision to meet learner needs, meet student needs, meet the needs of employers and industries. So we're halfway there, but we just need to make that kind of systematic change to make it more available in an accessible way. And you know, that's so that's the ambition. That's the ambition. But there's also very conscious that there's enabling themes that, that are going to allow that to happen. First of all, on staffing and structures, we need a modern fit for purpose, integrated staffing framework that will allow us to deliver on that. We need to make sure that we're learner and performance centered. So we need you know, more effective ways of understanding what our learners need so that we can then shape provision and shape our strategy in turn. Digital transformation, when we wrote the strategy, we didn't think we'd be anywhere near this. So we have a massive opportunity because there has been digital transformation virtually overnight, but now we can't lose what's great about that. Even when we physically get back into our classrooms and our, and, and our training centres, we need to build on that so that we are a real kind of modern future focused further education and training system. And obviously alongside that, we need to invest in our capital infrastructure. So that's going to be a real kind of lever of change for the system in future. And it's another area where the minister and the government have committed significant resources to help. So that's the that's the, the agenda, that's the ambitious strategy. And I'm just going to close now with, with one short ask, because I think the, the power of you coming together as practitioners and across ETBs is clear to see. So I would really like your help, I suppose, to, to kind of work together to develop, create, test ideas on, you know, what a kind of future staffing framework looks like, how, on how we continue to digitally transform our learning, on how we really deliver that integrated FET system, because it's all very well for us to say, well, we're just going to merge programmes, but that doesn't fully understand that you have so many different learner groups with so many complex needs. So if there is a ground up way, if there are ideas out there around how we can do that in a, in a way that, that will bring all of, all, all of you guys, all of the staff with us, I think we'd be really pleased to, and, and delighted to hear that as well. Because I think you've shown in your response to COVID, you've shown in the way that you've put together today that you, know, you, you work in a very committed, flexible, an innovative way and I think if we carry on that mindset to deliver the change that's required it can take us to a very exciting place in the future so let's invest a lot with the week's activities and um, it looks fantastic I'm going to try and tune into to as many of them as I can and it's such a, a privilege to be here and all the best for the rest of the week. Thank you so much, Andrew, and for setting us up for the for the rest of the week. And we really do hope that you can you can drop in um, throughout FetFest to, I suppose, take a look at all of the, the fantastic things that we that we do have going on on the ground. And I think that brings me on to to where I'm going next. We have to thank all of our colleagues um, across the ETBs across the country. Um, you know, this this event would not be possible um, without everybody's input, um, you know, and it's it's fantastic to see that the quality and the volume of on demand presentations that have come through as well. And all of them can be found on our FetFest um, YouTube channel and we'll be releasing them um, over the week. So following on from that, I would like to say a massive, massive thank you um, to 
Deirdre Keys and Ken Siri. Thank you for supporting us, for giving us the space um, and really opening the doors for events and projects like this and um, that that we run and that we work on. Um, you know, and it's it's kind of it's fantastic to have that that support um, organizationally, and it means that we can work to bring events like this um, both kind of across the country and then also on a daily basis to support our Fed educators within KWBTB. So thank you. I would also like to thank um, our manager, Catherine Byrne, for supporting us on, on a daily basis here in, in KWETB um, and for believing in us when we come up with wild ideas like FETFest. <laughs> so thank you very much. I have to thank the wonderful and fabulous ladies on the back channel for the week and who have been working so hard um, behind the scenes. Wendy and Carrie, thank you so much for everything. Um, you know, this this would not be possible with without you. To our Tel and PD colleagues across the country, thank you so much for supporting and working with us um, and pulling out all the stops in circulating the, the news and building up the excitement on, on social media, but also for calling in the troops on the ground and bringing together a fantastic collection um, of, of presentations for the week. I also have to give a massive shout out to Jessica Mullen and Jeremy Wren, who are over in Kumo space um, in our social networking platform. Wendy's going to pop a link to Kumo space um, into the chat, so you should be able to join that. And it's also available in the FetFest program as well. But give it a go, try it out. And um, we're going to show a short video in a minute that will just give you an idea of what that networking space is like. Um, but it will be informal, a place to have a chat, to meet new colleagues and build um, new relationships and hopefully give us some of that social connection um, that we've been missing over the, over the past year. So it will be great to see you in, in Kumo space um, over the, the week. Um, and there's there's tons of different rooms in there. Um, we have a FetFest after party, FetFest in, in the park um, and there's a chill zone in there as well. Um, for anyone looking for Carrie Archer during the week, you'll find her somewhere by the pool. But that social um, networking space will be open with hosts from 11 until 12 every day. But the space will be open throughout the entire event. Um, so my final thanks must go to our Fed educators. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for building up in the excitement and supporting us. Um, with FetFest. It was an absolute pleasure to see it referred to as our electric picnic of, of FET. Um, and do you know something, it's, it's been an absolute honour to, to work on this and to bring this celebration of professional learning and development live for all of you. So with that, I'm going to go straight into a quick tour of the Kumo space. I am joined by Jessica and Jeremy, who will be your hosts for Kumo Space. So we're just going to give you a very quick um, idea of how you can use our social space and um, to connect with your colleagues during FetFest. We are delighted to be here today uh, managing the space for Kumo Space. So Jessica can move up and down the Kumo Space just by using the left right arrow keys. Over to you, Jeremy. Hi everyone, I'm Jeremy from Kerry ETB and I'm going to be helping uh, Jessica with uh, Kumo Space this week. So you'll see a little circle here. Um, Jessica's just outside the circle here and this is our orb. So you can hear anyone that's inside of your circle. So if you move yourself, for example, outside of, you can see if I move. Um, and now I can move myself back and now I've moved into their circle and we can have a little conversation. And there's some little shortcuts as well then. So we've got the number one. What that's going to do is turn off my camera. And if I hit it again, it's going to turn it back on. And then we've got another shortcut, which is the uh, two number key. And that's going to mute your... 
that's it for me. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Jeremy. We also have a map button down in the right hand corner. So if you click on the map, it will show you here. You can see I have my initials on screen. If I hover over them, my name comes up. Jessica and Jeremy. And you can see here that we're down the back of the room in Kumo space. We're down hanging at the at the pool. Um, I know Carrie Archer will be down here um, during Kumo space. So to exit the room, you just navigate your way down. And if I just click on the top to move my, my map, you can see here that there's an exit button and you can click on the exit button if you want to exit this room and then go and join another room. And that is the same in all of the rooms. You can also pop up to the, the bar here and you can pour yourself a drink. So during Fet Fest, um, join us in Kumo space from 11 until 12 every morning, Monday to Friday. <laughs>